Welcome to the workbench, I'm Doug. Today's machines are vastly different than what they were in the past. Some of your older models that you may have had, you didn't even have to take them into the service unless you had a problem. But today's are a little bit more complex. And we suggest that you do take your machines in on an annual basis. But today, I'm gonna show you a few things that you can do to keep your machine running tip top in between those annual services. So first, we'd like to turn off the power to the machine. Next, we'll raise the presser foot lever to detach the presser foot. And if it's time to clean your machine out, it's probably a good idea to replace your needle anyway. So let's just take it out of your way so you don't stick yourself with it. We don't need any blood in this. Then we'll want to pull forward the detachable needle plate cover. Gently lift up and remove the bobbin case. Then the needle plate screws. So we can use our three in one tool for that. Most of the time, once you break that screw loose, you could just use your fingers to spin those screws away. Now you'll feel a little spring action when removing that needle plate. That's by that smart switch over here that detects which needle plate is attached. Next, you will need a Phillips screwdriver, but remove the one Phillips screw holding on this free arm cover. It's easy as well just to pull the cover away while you're backing the screw out. That way the screw remains in that cover for you. And what th this does is to give you a little bit of an escape area for some lint and fuzz that you may be able to blow out with some canned air. Now some may have suggested you not use this, but I think a lot of that is just because of the free end that's built in. If you lean or shake this can, it omits a Freon spray. So if you're gonna use canned air, you wanna hold it upright. You don't wanna shake it a lot. And you can direct your airflow with the little tube that comes with your canned air. It's also helpful when you're blowing into an area to also rotate your hand wheel at the same time. That way it's not impacting all your lint and fuzz into one general space. It will help to remove some of that um, lint and debris from all areas. Okay, so we'll kind of demonstrate a little bit. And what I think I might do is put a little fabric over here to catch some of that. Whoa, that's a little lint fuzz there. Okay, did we get any lint and debris out of there? We got some of that fuzz. Okay, now you also may want to use a pair of tweezers to clean out your thread cutting area here. This is the unit that comes over to collect your thread. And sometimes this little fuzz will give you a buildup that could interfere with your thread trimming. So you wanna make sure that you don't remove the fuzz completely because then it may not cut your thread. That kind of serves as a purpose to hold your upper and bobbin thread, just like the fuzz that's on your bobbin case, in case you've ever wondered what that's for. Okay, now it's also important to kind of inspect the area of the hook. Because you have a lip here that the bobbin case is sitting upon. And if you've ever broken a needle for maybe tugging on the fabric or not using the proper spool cap, that needle may have come down and put a nick or a burr on this hook. If you see that, it may have to be addressed by your certified technician, as well as inspecting your bobbin case area. Because when your thread um, stitch formation is happening, your thread is slipping between that outer rotary hook and this plastic bobbin. So any nick or burr within any of these two components could be causing some thread shredding. And your technician could clean and smooth that out, or if it's too bad, they may have to replace the hook. Okay, but for you for maintenance, this will also help clean out your low bobbin detector because you have a sensor coming across that area that could get built up with lint and fuzz, restricting the site to be seen. Okay, so after you've blow, done blown that out, if you have left your screw within the cover, then 
You could put it onto your tip of your screwdriver and then reposition your cover and the one Phillips screw. It's very easily fit back into place. Now, the machines of today don't require any lubrication for you as a customer. Most of the components are internal and they're self-lubricating. So really there's no need for you to lubricate anything in, within the hook area. That's why we have a plastic bobbin case against metal. If you have metal against metal, then it would require lubrication. But that's one of the reasons that we have this for you to make it a little bit easier. So the next step before putting anything back together would be to reattach your needle plate. And like I mentioned before, you'll have a little switch on the right hand side that's giving you a little bit of spring action. But I like that switch, it's pretty smart. And with the straight stitch needle plate attached, it will only allow you to stitch that center needle position. Pretty nice machine. Okay, and then after we get our needle plate screws secure, then we'll properly reattach the bobbin case with the adjusting screw that has the green paint facing towards the front. And you match the arrow of the bobbin case with the white dot on your hook bracket. Once that's in place, you see that it won't rotate in any other area. However, if you took the needle plate off with that bobbin case installed and you turned your hand wheel backwards, then your bobbin case would not be positioned properly. And if you were to put the needle plate on then, you could get a jam up or you could damage that bobbin case. Then reattach your plastic plate, your presser foot, Discard your old needle and replace it with a new needle. And again, the reason that we suggest that you take this in on an annual basis, because there's a lot of internal lubrication points that we can't see or get to. And that's where your Baby Lock certified technician comes in. So let me show you a little bit what they get to address. Well, now you get to see a machine in the state that I'm used to seeing them in. This is how far your certified baby lock technician will have to go to give you a full lubrication and cleaning of the machine. You can see here there's areas that we weren't able to access when we were blowing out just the hook area. And the machine has very strong casting here. And that's what makes it so durable. And a little tip for some of you customers that have the sewing and embroidery combination machines but all you do is embroider, it's a good idea that after cleaning the hook and race area, that you set your machine up for some regular sewing, maybe some decorative stitches, maybe some forward and reverse stitches, and that will help move those essential feeding mechanisms to give you longer lasting machine and smooth operation. So now that you know, get out and sew.